the internet first came online, the medium was uppercase only text. And then it got a little hotter and they introduced upper and lower case. And then it got a little hotter and they added a red and black ribbon. And so going back 30 some years, the medium of the internet has been getting hotter and hotter and more and more multimedia gradually. So it is absolutely no difficulty in, in saying that the that video is, is the next step. The trouble with video, of course, is it requires all new pipes and all new protocols and all new applications over time. So the, the video internet is taking decades to arrive. And we're out in the middle of it. Yeah. yeah. So um, why, it, what, you had a sort of a, a vision or a thought that this would be. Why did you think that it was going to go to video uh, some years ago before it wasn't practical whatsoever? Oh, no, because it was a straightforward extrapolation of where it had always been going. It's been, as, as the uh, economics of bandwidth have slowly improved, the uh, demand for a hotter and hotter, richer and richer medium has always surpass what we could deliver. So th there's n no breakthrough in predicting that uh, video is next. I kind of enjoy the fact that VoIP, which is voice over IP, uh, has been hot for 10 years. And the nice thing about that is it begins with V. So all the preparations that have been made, increasing bandwidth and um, for VoIP is vaguely preparatory toward the arrival of the video over IP. So, so now we talk about IPTV and so it's, but it, there's no breakthrough there. It's just, uh, you know, a decade, decades long trend toward more and more um, bandwidth and therefore more and uh, hotter and hotter media. So what is the value of the internet becoming more multimedia, if you will, or more video centric? What does that sort of mean for, for the medium or for people or for business or what are the implications of it? Well, there's several. One is the, uh, what the world needs is uh, more communication and less transportation. So I'm seeing as the medium gets hotter, and that is the um, experience becomes more complete, we have less and less reason to travel unnecessarily. So massive substitutions of communication for transportation, which could help the energy crisis, for example. But an a whole other implication relates to Chris Anderson's notion of the long tail. We have been um, getting videos, and I'm old enough to remember when television was novel in the, you know, I guess it was 47 was the year, or 46. Um, but for a long time, video was um, very scarce because bandwidth was scarce and we didn't have the long tail phenomenon. But now, thanks to the internet, we now have a long tail of videos, videos that are interesting to one person or two people or five people or ten. You don't need an audience of 50 million to justify a video. So I think the long tail phenomenon, uh, much more choice, much more access to information. Let me ask you this question, um, you know, kind of looking back, when was it, when, when, did, when was it, when did, uh, and if you'll tell the viewers here, when is it that the Ethernet became, uh, eth the whole Ethernet development was implemented in, uh, what was your thought about that in terms of its implication ultimately? Well, the Ethernet was invented in, uh, on May 22nd, 1973. There was no notion of video on the internet at that time, so Ethernet was not designed for video. But then again, it was pitifully slow in 73. It was only 2.94 megabits per second. But, you know, in the last 33 years, uh, we've learned to carry video on a packet basis, which is what Ethernet does. So Ethernet is now carrying video, even though that wasn't its intended use. Fantastic. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Is there anything else that you want to talk about? About uh, I, I, I think if you could maybe, I think the idea that video could somehow help with the um, transportation and efficiency of the way that society, you know, manages I, is is quite interesting. Is there something you you could sort of? Yeah. Well. You know, in the early days of the PC, people used to say the personal computer will never be used by professionals, it'll only be used by secretaries. And the reason is that professionals will never sit in front of a keyboard and type. Well, we all know that that's nonsense, because now all professionals sit in front of keyboards all day long typing. A similar 
uh, truism that's about to be reversed is the notion that in order to really be effective in selling, for example, you need to press the flesh. You need to be in person. And so a, a teleconference or a video teleconference uh, will never really replace face-to-face -face communication. That truism is about to be reversed because the quality of video interaction is getting better and better and better and better and better and there'll be some moment that hasn't occurred yet where people will forget that nonsense about having being there in person is absolutely necessary and it will become not necessary and people will then begin to use thanks to video will begin to use the internet as a substitute for transportation which will be a, a huge benefit to uh, all of mankind Great.